uh, slowly we are approaching uh, the end of our course, or to be more precisely, the end of uh, my lectures. And uh, in two weeks, uh, or 13 of May, uh, you will start uh, your presentations, which I'm waiting for with great interest, uh, honestly. Uh, so, uh, this week, uh, as I uh, promised you, uh, we will discuss uh, a topic which is uh, a little bit unusual for liberation theology, nevertheless is closely related to the topic, namely uh, anthropological uh, pauperization of America's uh, and Africa, and we can add also of Australia. And I hope it will be clear why I connected uh, this uh, problem of uh, uh, pauperization or even in uh, some extreme cases of annihilation of uh, the local indigenous cultures uh, during the process of Christianization. It means uh, starting more or less from 16, uh, 17, 18th century uh, in both Americas, North and South, where we assisted uh, to this uh, process of uh, uh, literal destruction of uh, local uh, cultures, religions, and even uh, of local uh, population, uh, which uh, is not uh, very much present in our uh, awareness of uh, Europeans. Uh, I think that we started to, to be more aware that uh, European presence outside Europe was uh, not uh, only positive uh, that we brought to other uh, regions of our globe, uh, civilization, culture, philosophy, enlightenment, and so on and so on, but also we brought uh, destruction. And this is exactly the point which I would like to highlight, to underline, and to encourage you to think about uh, that uh, on the one hand, and I think our course is uh, very structured uh, in, uh, as a very positive message that uh, liberation, emancipation, so uh, the flourishing of human being, of every human person, is something which we, uh, in our um, cultural and civilization project, uh, are uh, planning uh, for ourselves and for others. But sometimes uh, so-called uh, collateral damages, or really uh, damages, are incredibly uh, uh, high and it is worth it to reflect upon why uh, with the noble ideas to bring lights uh, or, uh, only through religion as Christians uh, were uh, thinking for centuries that Christianity is, we have this uh, negative or dark side of uh, this process of um, civilization or of um, uh, Christianization or evangelization, all these uh, concepts used to justify this process. I promised you to send you my uh, paper on the topic, uh, not because it's a very good one, but uh, I uh, honestly looking was looking for similar approaches and uh, I was unable to find a concise uh, uh, paper on the topic, so this is the reason why I send you my own, and unfortunately this is uh, in Polish. Uh, I thought that it is in English, but unfortunately it is in, 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 in Polish. So sorry for those of you who are unable to read it. Uh, so I will explain a little bit what it's all about, and if you will look, uh, all footnotes are referring to English uh, literature. Uh, 
Uh, but in these 10 pages, uh, 10 years ago, I was asked by um, chief editor of Africa Review uh, magazine to, to write about uh, what happened to indigenous African local cults, religions, when Christianity came uh, via missionaries uh, or colonizers, uh, what happened there. And uh, looking in the literature, I discovered exactly this dark side of Christian presence, the literal destruction of the local uh, traditions. And this is what I call in Polish zubożenie, and in English we can call it uh, pauperization. Uh, but this is only a case study of Africa, but we can apply the same uh, dynamic to North America to South, uh, South America and to Australia, where this lack of respect of the local culture uh, was um, uh, translated into destruction. And this is uh, what uh, mainly I was um, drawing attention of the readers of, of Africa, of this magazine, Polish magazine Africa. Uh, so, as an alternative, I thought that um, after five centuries of this dark presence in, in these regions, uh, actually the same Christians, the same Catholics and Protestants elaborated a, a new strategy. But be, before I will, I will pass to the second uh, uh, book, actually, not very thick, 170 pages, by uh, American uh, Jesuit uh, and missionary uh, Karl Starklov, a theology in the between, the value of syncretic uh, process. I uh, would like also to remind you that this uh, destiny, the destruction of local uh, uh, religions and cultures uh, did not um, take place, uh, for example, in, in, in Asia. Why not? Because these uh, traditional uh, religions, uh, cultures were very strong, older than Christianity even, and were uh, resisting this uh, process of destruction. If you take Confucianism in, in uh, China, uh, Hinduism in India, Buddhism in uh, all practically Asian countries. So we have a, a resistance of the, of the noble traditions which uh, uh, were able to uh, discuss as partners with the Christian missionaries and they were resisting simply because they were stronger. They were uh, able to demonstrate sometimes uh, the higher level of development um, in case of, of Confucianism or Buddhism or Hinduism than Christianity. And this is the reason why till now we don't have a high presence of Christians uh, in, in China, India or, or Japan because of this resistance. And now, uh, in Asia, we have a very uh, high degree of the development of interreligious dialogue, where exactly this uh, partnership between uh, uh, adherents of different religions uh, allowed this uh, uh, exchange of ideas. Nobody is pretending to have the better uh, answer for existential questions which humanity is uh, struggling with, but we have the variety of opinions which uh, in the process of exchange of dialogue we are finding a new answer. We discussed uh, this problem last, uh, last week using uh, theology of Hans King as a, a and uh, Abraham Joshua Heschel and Martin Luther King exactly as, uh, as a pretext to, to see how uh, the mutual uh, dialogue and uh, curiosity for one another enriched uh, all the participants 
of this uh, cultural and uh, religious exchange of ideas. Uh, and now, uh, please have a look on the to, uh, uh, on this uh, on this book by Starkloff, because uh, it is a new um, uh, pattern of uh, Christian uh, uh, approach toward local traditions. Uh, if you read the, in the introduction, you will see that uh, Starkloff. Uh, explain how come that he as a Catholic priest wrote this book. Um, so he, he is explaining that without an, a fascination which he experienced toward local uh, indigenous people, Native Americans, this book will be um, uh, not uh, written. So we have this mutual process of learning that you listen and you discover that a lot of practices which uh, he found uh, between local population are different from his own, but it doesn't mean that this uh, of low value or not worth it to, uh, to look deeper uh, for the significance of these local uh, practices. Uh, peyote, uh, you know, all, all uh, rich uh, customs uh, which uh, he found uh, uh, locally and uh, he based this uh, new theology on the pro syncretic process. Syncretic process is something, um, according to Starkloff and those who follow his uh, ideas, and I belong to these groups, uh, we think that um, a, the combination of different elements, so syncretism, means that you are composing a new quality, taking different elements from the local uh, tradition in this sense, uh, allowing you to elaborate a new awareness of respect toward nature, toward ecology, toward trees, animals, and the sun, uh, moon, etc., etc. So you are like opening your senses toward the new, uh, deeper uh, dimension of the cosmic reality. So the syncretic process is also a process of learning, of discovering that your own tradition is uh, was, um, if not wrong, was narrow, was uh, close to the dimension which uh, we discover when we listen carefully to others. And all this, uh, I think, um, have a tremendous uh, impact on, 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 the, on the modernity, on, on the present time in which uh, we are facing, which, in which we are living. So today we don't have this uh, urge to uh, fight against or to demonstrate that other lack of something. Uh, this um, is called uh, a controversial uh, theology or way of thinking which are looking only for, for negative sides in other, uh, in other cultures, religions, etc. This is over. Syncretism means that you are very open to create a new uh, quality uh, entering in dialogue. This is why in between is nothing uh, done forever, but this is the process of discovering. And uh, at the end, I would like to draw your attention also to uh, literary or works of um, uh, our Nobel Prize winner Olga Tokarczuk, that in her um, uh, books, uh, uh, this uh, curiosity for otherness, uh, uh, this uh, 
uh, new quality in in the in between what what is going on in the moment when we start to talk to one one another when we are interested in other cultures so something new is born in this process so we see this this new intuition syncretic intuition or syncretic awareness is present not only in uh, modern theology but even in uh, in literature, in art, philosophy, everywhere. So I hope that this uh, uh, syncretic process will, will encourage you also for your presentations and for your uh, final essays to be uh, as much uh, as possible open for, for new ideas which we um, uh, can discover outside of our own a tradition and I hope that we can really in, have an interesting exchange of opinions based on uh, a book by Karl Starkloff, uh, a Theology in the Between the Value of Syncretic Process or perhaps some of you will be even inspired by my paper on uh, anthropological pauperization.